No juice. No juice. No, no juice. I get juice. It's okay. He's 50-50. That's me a lot more than I thought it would. I drove this thing today too. Whee! If there was ever a time I should talk to you about checking your coolant situation, might be it. I didn't realize we had this big a problem with coolant on this truck. Go ahead, leave a comment in the section below about how messy I am with coolant. I'm a big boy, I can take it. Well, she might be a little low, I didn't think it would be this low. Okay, that's where it needs to be now. Wow, that's a whole bucket of coolant. All right, I'm gonna clean up my mess. I'm gonna throw my pressure tester on it so that we can test the pressure because before, you know, and we're gonna test it overnight. So, bada bing, bada boom. All right, one of the first things I'm gonna talk about with this, as the sun is set, we are getting pretty dark here. So we've got the lights from the shop on. I know I look a little ghostly, but it's just because we are outside with the truck. Um, and what I was going to say is this, it's really hard to find an inexpensive cap system for this that will work on an older radiator. You have to really look for them. This one I got over at Harbor Freight. It's the most expensive one they sell, but the other ones are really only for later model cars. They had one that was like 69 bucks and it was great, except it did not have a cap that would work with this. This one, the main cap on it works perfectly for these type of radiators. We got that and we set it down. What you want to do is to pump it up to the recommended pressure. This is a 15 PSI cap if it'll go up that high. Because what we want to do is we want to see if we're losing any pressure in this system overnight. And what it sounds like we're doing is we're losing a little bit of pressure. Yeah, we're losing a little bit of pressure on the cap already on this cap. That could be a seal issue on the ring. All right, you can hear it, it kind of sounds like bacon frying. Now, this is why you do a pressure test. I can hear a sizzling noise, sounds like bacon, right? It's actually the hose is loose on here. It's not tightening up enough, so it's not going to hold pressure. So what I'll do is I'll go in now and tighten this up and we leave the system pressurized. I might drop a little bit of pressure off back down to 13 PSI. That's it. Uh, drop a little bit on pressure. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tool and I'll tighten that up. And hopefully that'll stop this. I hope it's not a cracked radiator neck. Hope it's just a uh, tension point on this hose here. Mmm, bacon. So I'm gonna tighten it up. I don't wanna go too tight. 
You always want to check your hoses. Make sure you've got no, uh, no problems on them as far as cracking or fracturing in the hose. These are in decent shape. They're fairly new, so I'm not that worried about it. This is probably just a tension issue with the clamp. I'm going to listen again. I don't hear anything right now. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to set this one back up to 13 PSI. All right, I've got it in the middle of the 13 to 14 PSI. We should be good to go on that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this sucker sit out here overnight and come back out in the morning and take a look at what we've got. And then we're going to go over a few other things. Right now, I'm going to go in and take a nap like for about eight hours because it's late and I'm tired. Well, with the morning birds chirping, the roosters crowing, and the chickens clucking, they stopped clucking about three seconds after the rooster. There he is again. We are out here in the morning to check this and you can look at the gauge and tell that we got a problem somewhere in the system. We are at four PSI. We had pumped it up to 14 last night and we are, uh, we are nowhere, we're nowhere near there. Uh, so we've got something in the system that's leaking down. Now that could just be a hose leak that I'm not hearing. The one we found last night was fairly easy and straightforward because it was right there on top and it sounded like frying bacon. There could be something also with the water pump. That could be an issue as well. We could have the mythical uh, cylinder head cold leak that Cam was talking about before. Heck, we could have a warm leak. The only way to really know that would be to uh, pull all the plugs back out again, take our bore scope and go down inside of each cylinder bore and look at the top of the piston. If the top of the piston is pretty clean, we would know then that we have an issue with uh, water seeping in for a head gasket problem. We could also get a tester as well to test and see if there's exhaust gases inside of the radiator or the coolant. That would mean that we have a, uh, a push from the cylinders going out into the head gaskets and thereby back into the system up here in the radiator. But I'm not going to go into all that today. I mean, those are just things that you can do to check that out. The bore scope's pretty cheap. I'm going to put a, a visual link down here and one down in the description below for the bore scope. Somebody asked about that for last week's video. So we've got that taken care of as well, either this video or the one we did last week where we actually used the bore scope. Um, dang. I guess all that's left for me now is to start talking about some of the other things that you can encounter that are with this and a little bit of story time as well. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll do a little bit of story time for you. Everybody likes a little bit of story time. Now I'm going to talk about what Ford did, well, basically all the way up into the middle 70s with its radiator systems and its cooling systems on the car, if you will. What Ford did is, is basically, if you had a thing where the cap got, it got a little hot and things got a little steamy inside the engine, the system would actually pop the cap a little bit, let some coolant out to give it room so that it didn't blow everything up like the radiator, the heater core, and possibly do bad things inside the engine like a head gasket problem. But what that would do is that would actually put the coolant down on the ground up until, like I said, maybe the early 80s Ford did not have a catch can system on the cars. They may have started a little earlier than that. I don't know what GM did or Mopar. They may have had catch can systems from back in the 60s. I don't know. But what I do know about is Fords and that's what I'm working on today. So that's what I'm talking about. Some of the older cars did not have a catch can system. That's why you'll go to car shows sometimes and you'll see an old car sitting there and there's a little puddle of uh, green stuff. Your, coolant sitting underneath the front of the car. So these cars were not intended to do that, but they were allowed to do that by the manufacturer. So that's why you were supposed to go in and check your coolant periodically. Because if you didn't check your coolant periodically, you may run out of coolant because every time you stop, it would pop the cap a little bit and it would steam off or maybe even put coolant on the ground. Like I've said, you see it sometimes at the car shows. All right, so I'm going to talk about heater cores now because heater cores can be a source for you losing pressure in the system. They can also be a source for you losing coolant without realizing you're losing coolant. The heater core can actually leak inside of your heater box and it has 
a little drip point outside if you're lucky with an AC system. If you're unlucky, there is no drip point and it's all gonna end up on your carpet or on the floor. You'll know by being able to put your hand on the carpet sometimes and if it's damp, you either have a calvent leak or you have a heater core leak. The other sure way to know that you have a heater core problem is on a cool morning or even a marginally warm morning, when you start the car up, you'll get a little bit of steam up on the windshield and that'll let you know that condensate is inside of that box that's inside the cab of the car, which means you probably have a heater core leak. Also, if you've done a pressure test and it drops off. Now we have a brand new system in here from Vintage Air. I'm almost positive this problem is not a heater core issue. So we're gonna X that off of our truck. All right, so now we're gonna talk about head gasket issues. A cold head gasket leak is hard to detect. I talked about that a minute ago, but that's another thing to look at. If it's a hot head gasket leak, which is the one I'm gonna focus on right now, you're gonna get steam or condensate out of the exhaust pipes, even if the car is warm. If the car is warm and running and you're getting a lot of steam out of the exhaust, you probably have a head gasket leak. Uh, and that's gonna be something you're gonna have to pull the cylinder heads off usually. Some guy said you can put this blue stuff down inside there, but let's face it, if you've got enough coming out of the pipes that it's steam, uh, when the engine's warm, you have a real problem that you're gonna need to deal with right now. That can also, as I said before, be detected through the radiator. You can get a tester that you can put on there to let you know if the head gasket is popped and you're getting exhaust gases inside of the uh, coolant area or inside your radiator as well. Now, another one that can be a problem that you may not realize because sometimes it can be a little bit nefarious is a water pump leak. You can have a problem with the bearing seal on your water pump and most water pumps have a weep hole on the bottom side of them. If that weep hole, if you can get up underneath there and look at it, if it's wet or rusty looking, you have a water pump leak and that's where your coolant is going and why you don't have a pressure in your system overnight. Uh, because it's just letting the air out around and thus also coolant when you're driving the car. You can also take and grab the fan and rock the fan. If the fan and fan shaft will move side to side, your bearing is shot and you're gonna to have to replace the water pump. And boy, howdy, isn't that a lot of fun on a Ford because everything on the front of that engine is tied to that stinking water pump. If you're on a small block Ford, a lot of things still tied to it on a big block Ford and also on an FE. I said big block, I'm sure that guy's gonna write in and tell me that it's not a big block. It's a 429, 460, 340, 448, 449, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's an engine and it's big big engine maybe? Maybe I'll start calling it just a big engine. All right, that's my quick little tutorial. Yes, there are a ton of other things you can look at for this. You know, there's all kinds of places you can go. And if you've got an idea, I've gotten some really great ideas from you guys in the comments. Please talk to me in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I had my phone down and dead for a few days, so I wasn't able to get to the ones from last week. But we are back up and running theoretically on my new phone that I got from Inspirion, from the phone that I got from them before that was a replacement phone that busted and bricked when we were trying to shoot our manic mechanic for this week, which you've already watched, so you know I am not a real happy camper about that. Do me a favor though, check out our Patreon account and this list going up be here is here. I'm gonna tell Andrew, put it here, no, here. Here? There somewhere in front of me or beside me, up and down, like right here, he says. It says it's right here. That's the list of folks who put their money where their mouth is to support this channel and help us to do better stuff. The money goes not to just my pockets. I get a little bit of it, but it's such a paltry amount because Andrew is sucking me dry financially working for me, which is fine because Andrew has been an absolute gas to have here. I like having him. He's a good dude. He does most all the edits now. I'll still go in and clean things up a little bit and make things the way I want them to be. But overall, it frightens me how much he's mimicking my work style. It's like, he's, I don't know. I'm gonna wake up one morning, he's gonna be looking over my, at my face in the morning when I wake up and he's gonna go, hi, I'm here. Not that Andrew ever shows up that early. I would have to sleep in. He did show up on time today. One out of 20? Somewhere in there. Also subscribe to the channel. I don't know why I pick on it so much. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're on our way to 100,000 subscribers right now. We slowed down a little bit for a minute here, but we're at like 89,423-ish. <laughs> by the time you see this, there'll be more hopefully. But uh, we are on our way to the 100,000 mark. We want to get that plaque to put on our Paul wall that has our Paul wall that'll have our plaque 
because that's what we've decided to do. We're going to have our big pole wall with a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood that we put up in there, actually OSB oriented strand board that's going to have Paul's wall written on it really nicely and then we're going to have Paul's pole wall that he made and sent us mounted in the middle of Paul's wall with the plaque. It's a lot, but that's what we're doing. Finally, folks, be kind to each other, be good to each other, love on each other. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. And by the way, Cam isn't here today because we went to do a Manic Mechanic on Saturday. And if you watched Manic Mechanic, you already know what happened, but go back and watch that intro. That'll explain why we did what we did. There's gonna be two videos in a row that Cam's not on here because a lot of you guys get worried when he doesn't show up. Sometimes he just can't be here to shoot. So that's what happens. It's not about him getting drunk and laying in bed all day on Saturday. He almost never does that. I like Andrew. Sometimes Andrew does that. Not drunk, but he just can't sleep. If you're a redhead, in the comments below, tell me if you have problems sleeping. I am really curious because we're kind of concerned about this. Andrew has problems sleeping. He's a redhead. Cam has problems sleeping. He's a redhead. My stepdaughter has problems sleeping. She's a redhead. I sense a pattern here. I don't know why I'm talking about this. You guys could care less. Y'all probably have already stopped watching.